into this court of Camelot comes this green knight, and the green knight, as he says, is drawn to Camelot primarily because of the chivalry of Camelot. The fame of Camelot has, has gone far and wide, and people seem to be talking about it all over. And as the Green Knight himself says, he's drawn there because Camelot is the place of chivalry. It's the place that professes to have the greatest knights and the most noble men. The text says this, I am come because the fame of thy knights is so highly praised, and thy burgesses and thy town are held to be the best in the world, and the strongest riders on horses and steel armor, and the bravest and the worthiest of all mankind, and proof in playing in all joustings. And here, too, courtesy is well known, as I have heard say, and it is for these reasons that I come hither at this time. So he's come into the court primarily because he's been drawn there by the chivalry itself. This great feasting hall, mead hall, this celebration that they're having, has been part of the reason he's come, but he's also come because of the great fame of chivalry that Camelot purports. It's very similar to in Beowulf, the, 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 the Grendel creature coming towards Herot because of the feasting. He is jealous of the feasting in Beowulf. Here we don't get an indication the Green Knight is jealous necessarily of Camelot, but his, his nature is very much like the Grendel, like the grinder. He is a force that is malevolent towards human life. And he comes into Camelot partly to test the metal of the knight's that are there. All these knights profess to be great and noble and courageous and brave. Is it true? Are they really brave? Are they only brave when things are going their way? That's, that's a, a, a great theme in Anglo-Saxon literature. True courage is only measured by great loss. In the face of great loss, a man who professes to be courageous will prove himself to either be courageous or else to be, at heart, a coward. Because it's very easy for us to say and, and, and do noble deeds when things are going our way. Well, the Green Knight comes in to that court and he presents this game to the, to the knights. He says to the knights, here's this game. I'm going to allow you to cut my head off. And in a year's time, a year and a day, I want you to find me and then I'll cut your head off. Which sounds like a very macabre game. Uh, of course, if you cut the head off of the Green Knight, it's the end of the game, right? Because nobody can survive after he gets his head cut off. But remember that the Green Knight is a force of nature. He's not human like you and I. And so when we cut his head off, it's very much like cutting the head off of a flower or the head off of a, of a, of a piece of broccoli or cutting a branch off a tree. A new one just grows back. And so it is something of a lethal game. Can you deal that blow to nature and the forces of nature and say, oh, I'm a manly man because I've chopped down a daisy? Well, when that force comes back at you and says, now we're going to devour you, are you so brave? Are you so courageous at that point? And that's what he's testing when he comes into the court here of Camelot. He's testing whether or not all their bravado is real. Does it actually symbolize something? Or is it simply uh, hot air? That image of the exchange of blows is an ancient one. It shows up in a number of works prior to this. And so the, the, the Pearl Poet is incorporating something which was already in Anglo-Saxon literature and in Welsh and Celtic literature prior to him. That exchange of blows represents, to some degree, I think, the, uh, the exchange of blows that we have with the world at large. We, we deal out our, 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 our blows, so to speak, our, our effort, exerting ourselves or making a name for ourselves, and the world pushes back. We push, it pushes back. And sometimes that pushback can be very, very scary. We see this then in the court when the Green Knight says, you come and chop off my head, and none of the knights will stand up to him because they're all so terrified. We'll see what the result of that is in the next stanza, though, so let's read that together.